Alrighty, guys. Welcome back to another episode of Meet the Wild. I'm Will. I'm here with my co-host, Tyler. And today we have <laughs> two of our good buddies on. Caleb. <laughs> Matt, I was hoping somebody Matt. was going to give me a drum roll, but I didn't get that. <laughs> How's everybody doing? Oh, just living the dream, buddy. I'm doing pretty good. How yeah. are you doing? I'd have to agree. Yeah? Yeah. How's everybody's week going so far? It's only Wednesday, but... It ain't Friday, so... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it ain't Friday. That's right. <laughs> just, oh, just man. trying to get my levels set here. Keep talking, keep talking. Still working on some technical difficulties. But no, there's no difficulties, just adjustments. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. So we are back in the... Uh, back in the saddle. Back in the saddle. Haven't podcasted in a little while, but um, we got the gang here tonight. We got some good stories, some, uh, some recent hunting that we did that we think would be entertaining to talk about. Um, we're in Caleb's, uh, I think we're telling him we're in your basement. Yeah, well, you can tell him whatever you want to tell him. Uh, I remember last time we weren't sure, whatever. Not, no, but, it's uh, confirmed. <laughs> People <laughs> have left comments. Uh, <laughs> is that Caleb's basement? I'm like, yeah. They're like, dude, that place looks pretty cool. It does look pretty cool. Um, yeah, we're back in Caleb's basement. We're going to uh, talk about, I think we wanted to start with our, our most recent duck hunting adventure this past weekend. Who wants to start us off? I'm going to have to go check on my wife. <laughs> There's a lot of noises coming from upstairs. Is that somebody running? It? <laughs> it's hard to tell with my headset on, but that doesn't sound good. It's stuffed with his bone. That's a good uh, Oh, yeah. That's exactly it's the dog. It <laughs> I thought it was our uh, <laughs> the guy we were talking about before. <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah, yeah. I'd say let's, let's head on and on our uh, trip a little bit. So what do we do? Start us off. Well, for starters, uh, past couple years in a row, we've been looking to expand our, our first week of duck hunting. Um, basically, in the northern zone in New Jersey, we're in for a week, and then it goes in for a week down in the south zone, and then a week in the coastal zone. So one year, we didn't have enough fun in the north zone, so we decided, hey, let's go to South Jersey. So we just picked a place on Onyx, went down there, looked around a bit, looked at another spot. And for the past two or three years, we tried as hard as we could to try to kill a duck down there. And we killed a few, but we never had a really great day. And the black ducks are always weary. And the big groups of ducks are hit or miss. So last year was the first year that we knocked the socks off of them. And once we figured out what we needed to be doing, we said, well, this is really cool. So... I said, well, we should go again this year. And a bunch of those guys couldn't go. Some of them were out in Arkansas. Some of them were on their honeymoon or whatever else. More important than that. <laughs> it started hunting. off, I get a text at like probably 11 o'clock at night. You want to go to South Jersey this weekend? I'm like, yep. And he, no. He, at first, he was contemplating it. He wanted like, <laughs> I, the details. I needed more details. I can't just, <laughs> somebody just tells me a place. I can't just go there. You know what I mean? But nevertheless, we planned on it, and uh, we loaded up the truck on Friday night, headed down south about three hours. Well, we were a little bit late because uh, <laughs> Willie. Yeah, we were a little you behind. Just, it took us out. a while to pack the truck. There are some key <laughs> details here that are yeah. being left out. I love that. Just keep going. The, the, most, <laughs> the most important Don't part stop. to Will, I'd say, is that on the way, they wanted to stop at the Chipotle place <laughs> and at Playa Bowls. <laughs> so that Will could get himself a smoothie or whatever he gets hey, there. Anybody who has hey, a pliable knows what I'm doing. We got a shout out to our boy, uh, what was his name? Patrick. Patrick down in uh, Patrick the at, Chipotle. Yeah, at the Chipotle in Chester. Shout right. out, Patty. He, <laughs> Dude, he that boy some, can pack a burrito, son. <laughs> he yeah, he some beefy can. burritos oh, for us. my word. Yeah, they weren't too bad. I think he got actually. fired after we left there. <laughs> <laughs> first things first is I'm in like a camo vest or whatever, and he goes... <laughs> are you from that show alone on Netflix? I'm like, no. He's like, I love that show. And I was like, well, check out our YouTube channel. And then he goes, uh, how many subscribers you got? And I said, oh, I think we're like a little over 18K. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> you guys are huge. I'm like, no, no, we're not. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, uh, no, we're not. Tell me more. <laughs> And then he proceeded to make a ginormous burrito that he double wrapped. I'm I'm pumped about the double wrap. Yeah, it's hard to get those. He hooked this up for sure. 
But yeah, we uh, we stopped at uh, a Chipotle, got some got some food on the way there. Uh, we didn't get out. We didn't leave here probably till like seven o'clock ish. So we we're supposed to leave. We we're at supposed seven. to leave at seven. You didn't get here until seven forty five. Yeah, seven fifty. I'd say. Yeah, I might have botched that one. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> I think we were supposed to leave at six. We rolled in down there at like eleven fifteen. He, yeah. couldn't, he couldn't find that banana he was packing. Oh, oh we'll get to we're that. Get to that. <laughs> oh, Don't boy. Worry. Wait, hold on. The Caleb, fans are going to help me out. Caleb's first Chipotle experience was that, that Yeah, night. I mean, I would say it doesn't hold a candle to Taco Bell, but it's <laughs> it's the more healthy version, and I just can't. I'm not ready to handle Caleb's it. Caleb's used to eating a taco and going to the bathroom 10 minutes later. He didn't <laughs> yeah. go to but the bathroom to for two days bell. later. <laughs> I like those uh, cheesy gordita crunches, grilled cheese burritos. All that stuff is good. The slipperier, the better. I think he was more bent so they didn't have any ranch there. That that was the deal breaker. Yeah, but it, it was good. It was good. I'm not going to lie. It was good. Patrick did a good job. So if you hear it is, Patrick, I approved. I hope he I ate it while I was driving. Yeah. yeah. But anyway, we got down there, checked into the hotel. But here's the thing with those hotels. like <laughs> They say that they're pet friendly, but like you just never know if they're going to be pet friendly and charge you more or like what's going to happen. Well, typically, they charge you more when they're pet-friendly. Pet-friendly yeah. means you're allowed to bring pets, but you're going to pay extra to bring pets. Right. So We had a... we had a. <laughs> it was zero dark 30 in that hotel room. <laughs> yeah, well... We had Dutch with us, we, with us at the time. And two extra fully grown men. <laughs> we, we figured since we were going to get into the room at about 1.30 and leave at 3.00, they're definitely getting their money's worth. <laughs> <laughs> well, look at it. Let, let's 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 paint this picture here. So we roll in, kill Macawin to check in. The hotel was for two adult males, two queen beds, no dog. <laughs> so we're they check in. Will and I are helping get the boat ready. We it put was the, still hellaciously expensive. I mean, all things considered, for the amount of time we we're there mm-hmm. <laughs> for the two and a half hours. Yeah, close our so eyes. So, anyways, we proceed then at midnight now to set up the boat blind, which you'll watch in the video. And then Caleb and I went on a gander around the hotel field <laughs> and uh, we're doing deer drives and all types <laughs> of stuff out there, collecting some brush to use. on. Well, the, it started uh, just on the edge of the parking lot and then it wasn't really sufficient. So I said, man, look at that stuff all the way out across the other side. So that looks good. And Tyler yeah, just kind of uh, like paused as we were walking. I was like, you want to go look for it? <laughs> He's <laughs> like, I knew you were going to say that. I was waiting. He goes, Man, that stuff over there looks really nice. Cricket, cricket. <laughs> you want to go get some? <laughs> like I knew it was coming. So Caleb has a a blind specifically for his boat, um, but obviously you can't drive it down the highway. Otherwise, with with the blind up, it'd be flapping all over the place and falling apart. So we had to break down the blind, and when we got to the hotel, we kind of decided that that's where we put it together. And uh, at that point, Caleb and Tyler, I guess – clear cut the land around the hotel pretty much took every Caleb cut about half his finger off <laughs> yeah the a lot, lot of sharp. fingers were cut off this week this is Dude, like i'm still healing <laughs> you're still hurting matt oh my god <laughs> that sheetrock dust in the, in Boy, the cracks hurt i looked at it today and i was like man that's filled with so much stuff it's about flush holy <laughs> smokes i better dig that, that stuff out. sand it off <laughs> oh my. matt's brushing in i'm gonna fast forward real fast just to matt's brushing in we hear <laughs> he gets back in the boat and his hand is just shaking. I'm like, oh, that don't look good. Blood everywhere. Yeah. That so. sucker fell like it was down to the bone. <laughs> I mean, it was like the worst paper cut I ever had in my yeah. life. You can't get those ones to stop bleeding. No. So we're in the hotel parking lot at one o'clock in the morning. Mind you, there's still some guests kind of checking in and moving around. In now the we're at lot. one o'clock in the morning? Well, it was like 1230 probably. Right. Yeah, 1230, yeah it was probably close to 1230. Yeah, all right. We're putting the boat together. Dutch is still tied us. to a sign sitting next to us wondering <laughs> what we're doing. Poor Dutch. Yeah, we tied him to a sign so he wouldn't <laughs> kind of wander off while we're sitting there putting Dutch the boat together. Dutch was tied to a lot of random things. <laughs> <laughs> Will had the boat always tied to his, to his neck collar for a while. Well, that was, uh, we'll get to that part. Yeah, we'll that's that's that. way down the road. Yeah. Let's, let's carry on here. Yeah, we're wasting too much time. So who wants to start from us waking up in the hotel room? Whoa, 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 whoa. What are we missing? Two queen beds, two guys in a bed. We I brought, I brought an air mattress. Yeah. So. We get up into the room, and Caleb has a power drill going. He's taking apart all the beds. No, I'm just kidding. We had to shimmy these beds around because Caleb didn't want to share a bed with anybody. I was kind of worried to share a bed with Matt because he's been living with Jordan for a while now. <laughs> um, I'll right. leave it at that, but... <laughs> 
I was I felt more comfortable in an inflatable mattress. <laughs> you had your own safe space. <laughs> so I blew it up. I figured Dutch was gonna sleep on the foot of there, but he was like, nah dad, I ain't sleeping on there. He slept with Matt. <laughs> so, so whatever. So we get in there at one o'clock to uh uh, Caleb breaks out the uh, the air mattress. It's all deflated. He plugs in the little pump and he turns it on. And this thing is like a jet engine at one o'clock in the morning. Our neighbors probably <laughs> thought we were a bunch of schoolgirls laughing in there, man. It was hilarious. Oh, it worked. Man. We went to sleep, set our alarms for 3.30. And at 3 o'clock, I heard wind chimes. And I hate wind chimes. Was that I about one? came unglued. Was that oh, me? Sat up yeah, straight out of up. my bed. <laughs> And I was like, all right, we're leaving. I thought he was possessed. We're leaving. <laughs> I'm like, Tyler, turn the wind chimes off. He's like, turn my wind chimes. He was mad. The problem is normally you got to beat Caleb to just get up. And when I like squinted my eyes open and I heard him, all right, boys, let's go. I'm like, what in the world? Is, like, <laughs> what is going on right now? This ain't normal, man. Normally it's backwards. Well, now you yeah. learned it, the wind chimes. That's it. It was more the anticipation for the hunt, I think, is what really got me. Because when I'm really anticipating, like, I will not let myself feel sleepy. But if I don't have anticipation, I don't really sleep past my first four alarms. <laughs> <laughs> so anyways, uh, we roll out in the morning, had a half-hour commute over to the launch. A couple boats there. Uh, we're, we got launched, and we were kind of situating everything. Uh, that's one thing with Caleb is... As soon as the boat goes in the water, there's no situating time. It's, it's all go. So we were scrambling. I told you the night before, have your stuff where you want it in the <laughs> <Yeah>. morning. <laughs> but uh, we had another guy at the at the launch, and Caleb's pretty good at uh, making friends with people. We're, we're trying to. And this other guy wasn't having it. <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't giving away any I hollered stuff. at him. I'm like, hey boys, y'all ready to go kill some ducks? He's like, no, nah, the scouting report's been bad. I'm like. Oh, shoot. This, could, this might not go like we were thinking. I'm like, boys, we got to go. Caleb's like, uh, you going left or right <laughs> out of here? Stone cold He's nothing. Like, keep coming with the boat. <laughs> yeah. I was like, okay. So, then we proceeded. Wish I filmed this, but uh, there was some anticipation about the, the ride in. It was low tide. We were worried about beaching it somewhere. And it was a one crazy beaching ride. Beaching at in. 30. Yeah. Yeah. Going from 30 miles an hour to nothing. So, of course, in Caleb's boat, you got to be up on full plane to run shallow right if we're going to run as shallow as possible we're going to be on full plane and i've made the run a couple other times in several different mud boats and it's it's not the worst thing but the mud down there that's under the low tide water is very hard so the mud motors don't bite into it good and outboards just you know skipping they're they're stuck so with the jet this was kind of trial and error we were going to see what was going to happen but i knew it was going to be hammered down <laughs> or nothing sent it <laughs> Yeah, so we're like going through the main channel. We, I mean, what well, we thought was the main kayaker. channel. <laughs> I feel bad for the kayaker. I feel bad for everyone down there. Passing yeah. people. But we didn't. We didn't see anybody for the first like it was probably a twelve minute, no, nah, ten minute ride maybe. What, what two probably. miles maybe? <clears throat> yeah, no, I was, think it was three on the map, wasn't it? Okay, so, to the spot. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, so probably at three quarters of the way in, we hadn't seen nobody. But I knew the last quarter of the ride was over a really flat section, and I was worried about stumps out there. I knew we'd be good with water depth, but I was worried about that random tree or something that we were going to find. And we started coming around these really tight corners, and I saw a bubble trail, and that's when I looked at them guys. I started hollering at them. I'm like, hold on, boys. We're right behind another boat. I said, yeah. I don't know what we're dealing with. And once we come around the corner, this little boat, they're like putting along. You know, the outboard's doing all it can do in the mud. <laughs> And I can't get off plane. It's like four inches deep. Yeah, we would have been done right there. We would have been toast. We would have been hunting right there. Because once you're off, you can't get back on. Plus, once we came around, there was like two other groups set up. Yeah, right there. Yeah, we would have been right looking there. at them the whole time. Yeah. So I'm like, all right, we're just going to go for it. So we hammered on right past them. We hammered on. <laughs> they we looked like on. they'd seen a UFO. <laughs> so we kept going. And then uh, Caleb's like, hang on, boys. We heard that quite a bit. Yeah. And... Uh, he cuts it real hard, and then I see like a literally a 15 foot wide ditch is what it looked like at low tide. And you're like the banks are five feet yeah. high of mud above you, and then the grass on top of and that, and then the grass on top of that. So you're running like this little channel, and like at low tide, I mean, it's only it's close 10 to feet wide. Oh, yeah. yeah. And he's like, hang on, boys. And we just punched it in, and I was like, holy crap. 
And uh, the best part, the best part was Will was facing me the whole time, and I think he was just reading my facial inspections. And when that one bog came up, they were about to smack. My eyes got real big, and Will just like clenched up real tight. I grabbed him. I was like, "Oh, something's coming." Well, the best part was is all three of you had never been there, and I knew that you could bounce off the sides because that mud sticking out is just like jello. Yeah, it was like a pinball machine going up there. We're like, I knew I wasn't gonna make all the turns, so we were just gonna be bouncing. So I was like, "We're about to hit," and they're like bracing themselves. We're just like. Gracefully rode up on the bank, back in the water, throttle down, rode up on the bank, back in the water, throttle <laughs> yeah. down. Gracefully, the boat was at a 90 degree angle <laughs> at that time. But the last 100 yards, we were just bank to bank to bank until eventually we uh, we beached that thing. <laughs> and well, Kale was like, This is it, boys. This is we, where we're hunting. <laughs> we rode it all the way up until the the water was as wide as no the boat. More. And that was it. <laughs> They're like, This is it, huh? I'm like, I told you, it's really skinny here. <laughs> Uh, so we got set up into the spot by what four no we had it when we were when we got there we had an hour and 15 minutes till shooting time shooting yeah. time was like six thirty-seven. Oh, i thought we had two hours that was the plan but yeah wah wah stop and yeah. this happened and that you know uh, i think we were 15 or 20 minutes later than planned getting out of the ramp yeah getting out of the ramp was yeah, a, yeah. But we got all the decoys set, everything set, and uh, definitely tricky with the tidal waters, like having long enough um, rigs, Texas rigs and stuff on the decoys is Which we, we knew that was going to be an issue because every time we go there, that's an issue, and we're set up to hunt in three to four foot deep water at most. If we go to the river, we set up on, you know, in sandbars or whatever, so we're not worried about it. Or down there, when you set up in the morning, the decoy falls out in the mud, and then by the time shooting time comes in, the decoy's floating. And then by the time the ducks come, the decoy is floating away. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So the night before, me and Matt hooked up double Texas rigs. So it was two rigs hooked to each other. So at low tide, they were both sitting on the ground. And then at high tide, you know, one of those weights was pulled up. So they were effectively, I guess, if they were five mm-hmm. foot, they were 10 foot leads. Yeah. So uh, that was good. Got the boat tucked away and Caleb's got, what do you call them? Spud bars or whatever? Spud poles, yeah. Spud poles, we had those set. Those were game changer. Yeah, they're meant. There's like little welded rings on the front and rear of the boat, and you can take these spud poles and stick them through into the mud so it locks the boat in place. Yeah, they're definitely key. In mm-hmm. the past years, with boats that didn't have those, we had to use an anchor, and what a just pain in the butt. Every time you pull the anchor up, you got mud on the boat. It's just a mess. This is just so quick and effective. Yeah. They work good for picking up the decoys, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But anyway, so, so we're set up. Now it's time for breakfast. Oh, take it away, Matt. Well, we uh, we brought down some venison Taylor ham and a dozen eggs, and we fried them bad boys up. Me and Tyler dug into some peppers and onions, though. Cause oh, yeah. Well, and peppers Caleb and onions, and these guys are a bunch of females. What you used to cook it and everything? Uh, we brought down, um, I think it's like a 17-inch Blackstone, so it's just like a small little camp stove. Perfect. Threw that, boat. threw that in the back of the boat, and just basically threw everything on at once. We all had little uh, breakfast burritos. Even the dog got a little bit of, <laughs> little bit of food in there. Oh yeah, he um, appreciated. By the time we were done with breakfast, it was like what ten minutes to shooting light. Yeah, it was perfect yeah. timing. Yeah, somehow we timed it perfectly, unintentionally. I think we we originally thought about getting there earlier, and for whatever reason, we were late. But it worked out perfect because, like, literally, yeah. I'm like at the grill cooking, and I turn around, and I'm like, "Holy smokes, dude!" Like, there's like three teal just buzzed us. I'm like, "All right, boys, let's finish eating and load the guns." Yeah, because we're sitting under the the boat blind, so it's <coughs> kind of darker yeah. in there. And then yeah. we kind of were like, "Oh yeah, we sh- we should probably uh, get ready here." Yeah, load the guns, you know. Oh yeah, and then Ty brought his uh, what was that jet boil, right? Yeah, my jet boil. And he made me about the strongest <laughs> cup of coffee I ever had in my <laughs> life. I mean, it felt like I dipped my cup in the mud and just took a swig of it. <laughs> so I know it was good, but it was some strong stuff. I normally boy. have uh, I take my pour over and then I add grounds in. I and I do one cup and then I grab a new filter and everything. Well, we were running out of time, so I just added some more grinds to the one filter I was using for mine. And I made Matt's a little strong. It felt like he put the whole can in there. I didn't sleep till like <laughs> twelve o'clock that <laughs> he night. He was chewing. <laughs> Holy smokes! Yeah, that stuff was. Uh, that stuff was like that Colombian whatever <laughs> shit they saw at um, Quick Check. Right, Boy, yeah. it keeps you up for three days. Yeah. But yeah, that was some. That was some good stuff. So at this point, contrary to any other hunts that we do, normally we have at least two scouting missions for every hunt to give you an idea of you know expectation and how to prepare. 
Where in this situation, because we're so far away from the destination, it's kind of just a destination hunt trip. If it works out, it works out. If it doesn't, it doesn't. And it's the same date as last year, same weather, identical tide. Everything's the same except the ducks didn't show up. So I was expecting waves on waves of teal in the morning as per what we had seen the year before. Yeah. I think I think you, you're jumping a little ahead, though, because when we started, as soon as shooting light came around, there was one that buzzed us right away. Oh, yeah. And Caleb sniped it, and everybody's looking at each other like, oh, man. No, they, they said, said before they shooting said, light. They said, duck right here, and we'll duck down it, like I mean, he didn't know what was going on. And also, oh, yeah, 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 I didn't. <laughs> we're like, <laughs> here's true. a duck, and Kit so Will I, hits the deck <laughs> instead of popping out with his gun. We're like, what at, are you doing? At shooting light, we're all standing there loading our guns. I look to my right, and there's, you know, Caleb. Tyler, Matt, they're all putting on their face paint, getting ready. I turn around to reach in my bag for something, and all of a sudden, I hear a shot go off. And I like, I hit the deck because I thought somebody like accidentally discharged their gun. I turn around and I see a puff of a puff of feathers, <laughs> and Caleb standing there smiling. I'm like, oh boy. Yep. It wasn't an accident. It was an on purpose discharge. Yeah. Oh yeah. It was an obligation. <laughs> At ten yards, this little, this poor little lone teal just took a dusting. Yeah, shooting a mod choke with boss number fours, and it came straight on us. And I knew from the year prior that when they came straight on you, they broke so hard. Once they broke their their forward flight path, that you almost was impossible to hit them once they started turning because they're just so fast on the turn. You can't swing fast enough out of a boat. So I just pulled up and shot, and it indeed went down. The problem was is that we were sitting so far below the grass line that Dutch in his wildest dreams couldn't imagine where that bird possibly could have gone. <laughs> so we kind of just you know held him on. He went out because he thought that he could find it, but he didn't want to climb the muddy bank. So I told him to come back, and he stayed on the boat for a while. And we had a few more birds buzz over us, you know, work over us, but nothing tried to work the decoys. Nothing really had interest in the spinning wing decoys. Even in the flashback, but it was it was slow though. It was super slow. It was like ten times deader than it was last year. It was yeah. it was crazy for me to see because you're at the same time period exactly, and you know you're expecting something, but then it kind of reminds you, hey, this is like is all up to the migration. It doesn't matter what the weather is today. It doesn't matter what the tide is here today. It doesn't matter that you got the spot that you wanted today. And even if we had spent plenty of hours scouting, it probably wouldn't help us anymore. But to know that the numbers weren't there, because mm-hmm. I think when it comes down to it, and you're hunting in that scenario, it's a numbers game. The more birds that are there, the more opportunities you have. Yep. Where we didn't have a lot of opportunities because there wasn't a lot of birds. We shot a couple times more, but nothing significant. But we did hear tons of gunshots. Right. Which at first I was like, man, maybe we're like in the wrong spot. Yeah. And then we started we keying in thinking. to like where the gunshots were. And saw how high they were shooting at them. They were shooting at black ducks that were probably 120, if not more, yards yeah. in the we, air. We'd see a duck buzz us out of range and go over to where we were hearing shots, you know, previously to the next group over. And we kind of, you know, faintly see the duck and how high he was. And then we'd hear yeah. about 13, 14 <laughs> shots. Bang! Bang! <laughs> and then the duck would turn around and come back to us, still out of range, but. I'm like, oh my word. Yeah, they were just sending them. I don't know what. Which they were all thinking. that does really. Is make everybody's hunting so much harder. <laughs> yeah, because it makes all the ducks weary. It, it makes everybody yeah, all hard, of them. You know? I know we had it last year where we were doing a lot of the shooting compared to everybody else, and we had birds that would be working us, like a group of thirty-five teal doing their spinning thing, and somebody would shoot must have been a mile away. It would send them straight into the sky. Gone. That's it. The opportunity is over. So that just shows how much that they're coherent to like what's going on. Now imagine a black duck that's already weary at 120 yards. He can see the people shooting at him. Mm-hmm. And he's like, well, he ain't going to touch me up here, but I ain't coming any lower either. You yeah. Know? <laughs> yeah. So that was a bummer, but we, we do kind of have an idea of why it wasn't everything that we thought it was going to be um, besides the conditions. And that's because at like 930, Oh, well, Willie here whipped a banana out. And I'm like, I'm not superstitious. Oh, and I don't yeah, think any of us that. are. And then bring this story up. But it's just like a known thing. You do not bring a banana on a boat. 
And here oh, we are, right, just taking on. a risky ride we, of our you life. You said it, it's a known thing. We were eating dinner five minutes ago with Jordan and Abby, and neither one of them knew about it. Jordan barely knows how to tie her shoes. You can't go off of that <laughs> one. That. You can't go off of that one. I'm sorry, babe, that. but I know how you are. Jordan, I know how to She thought you, know she thought you couldn't bring the banana on the boat because you were going to slip and fall on it. Like it was <laughs> like a Mario Kart game. All right. I mean, didn't know either. I'm giving myself some credit. All I'm saying is the no, educated there's... outdoor person <laughs> should be highly aware of the facts True. of the penalty of bringing uh, such banana upon the boat. Rule number one, no bananas <laughs> on the boat. The best part is period. when he's eating a banana, he, you know, we're giving him heck for it. And he's like, well, I'm, you wouldn't like... believe what else I brought with me. And then he pulls out a clementine. I'm like, dude, you could have a whole boat full of clementines. It doesn't matter. <laughs> I didn't know what the superstition was on clementines next. So, <laughs> I'm like, well, whatever man, it was. Why do I smell? I look over and Will's got this banana shoved down his throat. I'm like, you have got to be kidding me. <laughs> what? Well, the banana factor really carried over. I can say that. Yeah. It was just slow. I mean, there was ducks flying, but nothing like. Nothing crazy. I mean, we did see a couple of cubbies you know, of like 50 teal here and there, but. But they were all, it seemed that they were seeking refuge with the geese. Yeah. And whenever the geese would be bumped around, because goose season wasn't open there. And there was a lot of geese. Yeah. There. They would Runs just bump with the geese. All day long, we just saw birds flying, but they were the wrong ones. <laughs> so I think at probably about 11 o'clock, you know, 1030 was high tide. So about 1030, 11, we kind of decided we were like, all right, this is B. We're not going to see any more action because I was thinking it's possible that maybe the high tide comes up, flushes these grasses, and we were hunting kind of like this wild rice berry mixture of of sorts. Maybe then they'll come in here to hit it then because it's you know give me they a can shallow kind of feet. swim around right. it a little bit, which is exactly what happened last year, except for the fact that the number of ducks wasn't there to do that. So yeah, we saw five do that, but not five hundred. Mm -hmm. So we decided it was it was time to make a move. <clears throat> so we went on a little boat ride. Mm hmm And then uh, we headed to the launch. This little boat ride put us about into uh, the Atlantic Ocean. <laughs> Caleb yeah, wanted Tyler's to like, the we, so. are we at the launch yet? I'm like, <laughs> no, but we are in the Atlantic Ocean. <laughs> <laughs> I thought we were going back to the launch. I was a little confused, but eventually <laughs> we got back to the launch. We uh, loaded up the uh, we loaded up the boat on the trailer. Had a uh, nice friendly run in with our buddy. Yeah, yeah. Tracy, the game one, he was there. Super nice guy. Super really nice cool guy. guy. Mm -hmm. Very cool guy. We he, had talked to him last year and talked to him for a considerable amount of time, and he's a really down to earth guy. Has been a game one, I think, for thirty something years. He's almost sixty years old and getting ready to retire. He's the kind of game warden that looks for rapport in people and remembers people. Mm -hmm. And he, he remembered us right away. I told him, you know, hey, mm -hmm. how's it going? Told him who I was. And he's, oh, I remember you guys. And we, we talked for a considerable amount of time. Yeah. Yeah, we had a good run in with him. And uh, he, I think he had said that not many other groups were too yeah. successful. He said either. the most that he saw was a group with five teal. Yeah, yeah. and everyone else was one to three. One to three, right? yeah. Yeah. Nothing crazy. So, yeah, then we uh, proceeded to get some lunch, regrouped, and got some Red Bulls. Oh, yeah. Yep. And then we head out for our next spot. That We, we kind of got some local intel a little bit. Well, we get to the <laughs> ramp, and there's this, this gentleman and his wife, and they're about to go crabbing. <laughs> And all of a sudden, his wife just starts spilling the beans. <laughs> oh, my yeah, husband shot his like limit this morning <laughs> over there, blah, blah, blah. And, and this guy isn't saying You guys should go over there and hunt. Yeah. Her husband was pretty bent. Yeah. <laughs> yeah he, he, he threw that boat in reverse, and he was out of there. <laughs> yeah, once he got a start, he was, like, yeah. gone. <laughs> yeah, for a while, he, he was trying to peace out while she was yapping her mouth. Yeah. And he kept pulling her whenever trying to start his yeah. boat. We're like, <laughs> and just, we're like, you need well, a jump there, bud. Tell us more. I was waiting. From him to accidentally knock her overboard. Oh, <laughs> sorry, uh, sorry, hon, sorry. Oh man. Uh, but yeah, we got out of there, got some lunch, and afternoon flight. Anybody knows can be a total waste of time, especially on bluebirds guys. But at this point, we're this far from home. Might as well hunt. We got nothing to lose. Mm -hmm. A little bit of time, and maybe a little bit to learn. It's one of those scenarios. Maybe it's kind of a scout hunt. And the first year that we ever visited this area, South Jersey, I had scouted this, and I knew that there was ducks there. Um, 
but it was kind of a different kind of scenario. A lot of privately owned islands within the piece. And to be close enough to the ducks, you'd have to hunt the edge of the public as the ducks were seeking refuge in the pub or in those private patches because mm-hmm. there's not a lot of pressure. You know, it seemed like there would be like four duck blinds all right across from each other, and then you go a mile and not see a thing. So on our way in there, we bumped up a bunch of ducks. We found a good spot where we were like, all right, this looks good. And here, three teal buzz around the boat at like what 20 yards 20 yards i don't even know maybe for five closer, minutes yeah. long enough that we <laughs> were all like just us. watching them whistling at them and not a single one of us pulled our <laughs> guns out until they were gone and then we pulled our guns out and you know okay we're gonna set up here for sure and then drake mallard gets out of the bushes just flies right past us we're <laughs> like all right cool this this looks yeah. like could be the spot i think we had a good setup there we had yeah, a, we kill, had a, a really killer setup, setup just no ducks like, yeah, that's... yeah. We we pulled up there and we we saw birds immediately. So we're like, this is it. We're we're gonna we're gonna hang out here for the afternoon. We set up uh, the spinning wings. You had that. I don't even know what you call that one. The flashback. The flashback one. Yeah. Super cool. Uh, super cool motion decoy. I guess. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The flashback too. Its head goes up through its body and and forces it to dive and makes it look like it's rippling and feeding at the same yeah. time. It's really neat. But our boat setup, we were backed up to like a 10-foot tall Vragmites. Oh, and yeah. Matt was going through, <laughs> just pushing them to lean them over the boat a little bit. And the shadow. Yeah. And the, yeah, we had a good shadow because the, the sun was starting to set towards the west in that direction, and it was causing a shadow over the entire boat. So we were backed right in there nice and tight, and I think we were probably almost invisible at yeah. that point. Yeah. We, we were because we saw how many... How many birds, not ducks, but... Uh, the sandpiper birds. Oh, yeah. yeah. They were so cool. What's the other ones? Uh, with the they're like snipe. No, no not those. Was, not the mergansers. The, uh, oh, cormorants. Cormorants. Cor- yeah. oh, we could have killed 100 we, of those. We had cormorants literally buzzes probably 15 feet in front of us. And every time, Will's like, oh, right here, right here, right here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. Oh, oh, here there's two. Two, two. They're coming, they're coming. Cormorant. <laughs> oh, oh, right here, right here, right here. I don't know. It's a flock of Tweeties. Not the shorebirds. <laughs> we I saw mean, them. we were in the yeah. flyway, just oh, um, minus the ducks. It was, so it I was, can't wait to go back to that spot Yeah, when it's, it's cold out. Oh, man. Just because of how they're funneled through there and because of yeah. how our decoys could sit and how we could sit. Because I would say the hardest part about there is actually being able to set up your decoys and find a place that your boat can sit within range of them. That makes sense. But it was and nice because was we were off spot. of we yeah. were off of the decoys. We weren't enough, sitting in like, at all. Yeah, we weren't sitting in the middle of the decoys. You know, right? We yeah, we had set them up on the other side of the uh, the marsh, I guess, yeah. or the river. To the, the edge of the decoys was probably right. twenty yards, and to the farthest decoy was thirty five or whatever. You know, yeah. So any birds perfect. are fair game in between us and them. Yeah, yeah. It was a good setup. But they didn't come. But they didn't come. Yeah, we hung out there. The entire afternoon until uh, shooting light was over, and uh, which was still light as lunchtime at shooting light. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was, so <laughs> it was the sky. We did see a lot of birds flying off in the distance, though. Yeah. Like, I mean, yeah, you could see big groups of whatever they were, teal, mallards, whatever. Like, wait, we were just not in the right For whatever section. Reason. Like, we had the sweetest setup. It's yeah. just like we weren't in the where we you weren't on the, the day. Yeah, yeah. But it's a poke and hope. Which so. in those, I think a lot of those could have been. Uh, using their in that piece there's there's like little swamp holes that are all segregated that to walk to you'd probably have to walk across floating marsh for who knows how mm-hmm. long and you don't want to walk so they have no stuff. pressure and they're just be bopping around over there doing their thing yeah more than likely but yeah so the whole time I'm thinking man well this was fun but it's kind of a bummer you know i guess we're gonna pack her up we'll head back to the ramp and we go be bopping back to the ramp. We're listening to our song. I mean, like jamming. We're, to our we're song. blasting. Yeah, we, we were rocking. <laughs> and uh, we get close to the ramp. I could see headlights. I'm like, okay, maybe somebody's like loading up or something. Like that's weird. And then I could see somebody standing on the ramp. I'm like, okay, that's really weird. What are they like looking at? You know, they're looking at us. We kind of look goofy, you know. We probably sound goofy coming through the marsh. <laughs> that, that jet is just screaming. Yeah. Oh, man. We're jamming in the Marshall Tucker plant. <laughs> yeah. And uh, we get close to the launch, and I hear, hey, you boys, uh, before you before you come over here, do you mind doing something for me? 
And I recognize the voice. I'm like, that's Tracy. That's the game warden. And I'm thinking, what in the world could he want us to do? And then one of you guys want to take the story from there? I thought he said, dock your boat and get up here now. <laughs> I was like, oh, no. Well, we basically, he told us that an old man was missing. Like an eight, He's like 82 years old. I guess he's been hunting there for years on end. Yeah. Um, and he normally is back like. He hunts out of this. This, this th- boat. This According to Tracy, yeah. this like kind of a sketchy canoe or kayak yeah, or something yeah, like yeah. that. He Did said. it even have a motor on it, Caleb? Yeah, it was just a little John boat, right? Well, it was this eighty-two-year-old man that normally hunts out of there, and he was super concerned because this, like, this game warden actually cares, you know, like, mm-hmm. really into the hunting and, and the, at this the point, hunters it was, themselves. It was just about dark by yeah. the time we got back to the launch. All right. So he he asked if we can go look for him, and he's like, "Oh, you go up that cut a little ways, and it's on your right, blah blah." blah. So we go up in there, and pff, we hit bottom like the first <laughs> yeah, ten feet in this down. cut. I mean, we turn. We had the dog. We had the decoys, all of our gear. I mean, and stuff. how much weight do you think we had? Pro- uh, I mean, a 250 lot. Two hundred fifty pounds. <laughs> <laughs> oh, probably like eight, nine hundred pounds. Three hundred, four fifty. Yeah. Probably. But then, then literally, I was like, yeah, dude, we might as well just easy. We might as well just turn back and you, well, unload everything. And you yeah. just take the warden because he knows these waters better than we do. We're just yeah. going to be out here like basically this for a this old haystack. guy has been hunting this spot, and he's always back before dark. And Tracy, the game warden, always, I guess they're friends or whatever they he knows, and he was concerned because it now it was dark. His truck is Pitch parked black. there, and he is not back yet. So he's like, I'm very concerned that something has happened. He right. hunts alone. And this being an old guy, like, all right, this is a legitimate. Yeah, the guy's 80 it's not years like old some going kid's out there duck hunting. Like, yeah. It was, legit, so, it was a concern. So, like, we're all like, all right, well, now it's time to, you know, get serious. We get the med kit. We get extra jackets in case the guy got wet. We strip like, the whole yeah. boat. Strip the we whole boat. Everything out. This is where, you know. Dutch got tied to the freaking boat wench, and he was yeah. all pissed off, yeah. but he didn't know yeah, what was going dad's on. Yeah, leaving with some random dude. <laughs> so after we yeah. pretty much beached the boat, Matt had the good idea. He's like, hey, let's just all jump off. Let Caleb t- take the mm-hmm. game warden. We'll take everything off. So we go back to the ramp. We meet the game warden. We unload a mountain of gear. Mm-hmm. In the middle of the boat ramp. In the middle. <laughs> we just threw it in the middle of the boat because we're trying to be somewhat quick Fast. about yeah. what we're yeah. doing. Um, we take the dog with us. Tracy throws on his waders, his jacket, jumps on the boat with... Med kit, the whole nine. Yep, he's got all his gear. <clears throat> jumps on the boat with Caleb. They take off. And then me, Matt, and Tyler are standing there looking at each other. We got a mountain of gear in the middle of the boat ramp and Dutch just staring at us. Like, <laughs> like why am I tied to the boat hitch? <laughs> so so we got to we gotta clean up here. So my first instinct, we didn't have a leash or anything for Dutch. I'm I like, think we did have a leash. We just didn't know where it was. There was a yard there was sale. There was three in the truck. We had but a, a blind strap on him at first. <laughs> yeah. And then, and then Will decided to hook him up to the boat winch. Yeah. So Give him a little I, more range. I couldn't <laughs> find anything else. So I unwheeled the boat winch you know a couple turns <laughs> and i put the little the, the massive you know hook that you hook you know typically hook to the uh the bow of the boat and i put it on his collar <laughs> that's good he could only go 30 feet exactly. yeah. so he oh, uh, will didn't even give him 30 feet he had 12 <laughs> so as we cleaned up our mess dutch was just you know pretty much tied, <laughs> tied to the front of the boat trail hanging out i feel like if somebody had pulled in at that point oh. it would have been a little bit weird yeah no boat three no dudes boat. a dog and a ton of stuff sitting on the boat ramp <laughs> we sunk the boat but all right so now from my perspective so Mr. Tracy here, he's on board, and I said, all right, which way do you want to head? And it was kind of like a a beautiful relief when you go from hauling that much gear in a boat with a jet motor on it, and it's like struggling to get on plane to just two guys with nothing in it. You hit that throttle, it's just like whew, right on plane, we're hauling. And he looks at me, he goes, what brand boat is this? <laughs> and, of course, I got all the surround lights on, so we're looking at everything as we're driving, and we get it going, and we're cutting through a few flocks of birds and whatnot. He's like, ah, oh, let's look over here on the right. Let's look over here on the left. And we're not seeing anything. And he was getting really worried. You know, he's, he's like, man, this just isn't right. He's like, I, I'm not going to be able to sleep tonight. You know, and I, I've known this guy for so long in here and know he's stuck out here. I said, well, maybe I'm just trying to come up with ideas in my head of what we need to start looking for. I said, maybe he got caught. You know, the tide was falling out. Maybe he had beached his boat and the tide you know, fell out below it. And now his boat stuck up on a bar or something. And he just, 
He's just sitting there in the boat waiting for the tide to come in. He's like, yeah, that's possible. I just don't know. So we look for a couple minutes, and he's like, all right, let's let's head up this way, and then if we don't find nothing, we'll, we'll have to call the PD and come up with another plan. So, okay. And he was telling me stories about when he was a kid trapping there and whatnot. And out of nowhere, I catch just a little gleam of a headlamp through the reeds. So I said, whoa, there's a headlamp. So I cut back, go up this cutaways, and then I see three headlamps. So I get off the pad, you know, I slow down, kind of motor up to him. He goes, uh, is that, you know, we'll call him Larry for now. Is that you, Mr. Larry? <laughs> and the guy goes, no, that ain't me. <laughs> and Never heard just, that name in my life. Yeah, and, they, and they just, like, keep going. And he goes, state game warden, you want to see their eyes get big? <laughs> You would have thought that they just stole, like, the crown jewel or something. <laughs> Caleb's got the speaker on his boat and his, his phone on Bluetooth, and he was like, I got your back. <laughs> whoop, whoop, whoop. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, from these guys' perspective, they have no idea what's going on. This boat with all these lights on it that they just probably heard go by earlier Oh, came very whizzing. well. Lo- would have looked like it, it was like a more yeah. equipped state police well, boat. First, for first we, we go by blaring music, <laughs> yeah. jamming out on the boat. Next thing we're showing up with the warden on the boat. They're probably all confused. Like, yeah, they don't know what's like, going on. What in the world is going on? So, you know, these guys are sitting here and they've got a couple little John boats, whatever. And, and this one boat, it's about 14 foot long, probably 30 inches wide with like 10 inch sides, you know, lead blue paint on the side of it and a little kicker on the back. And that's who he had first talked to. And after he told him, hey, you know, I'm the game warden, these guys all, you know, shut their boats down. And he goes, so if you're not Mr. Larry, then why do you have Mr. Larry's truck? And the guy's like, oh, Mr. Larry's my grandpa. And I'm thinking, oh, boy, here we go. (laughs) And he goes, so you got Mr. Larry's boat too then, don't you? He's like, "Uh, yes, sir, yes, sir, yeah, I got his boat. He goes, then why didn't you say so when I asked you the first time? He's like, oh, I, I didn't hear you. I didn't hear you, you know. <laughs> so he says, I'll meet you boys back at the ramp. I'm like, man, I'm so glad that I'm not these guys, you know. <laughs> well, we turn around to start leaving, and uh, he goes, is your boat running? To the one other guy. And the other guy's like, no, sir, it ain't running. It ain't running. As if, like, it wouldn't start, you know. Mm. And... uh he looks at me and goes, you think we could give this guy a tow? And that guy heard it. And he's like, no, sir, it runs. It's just not running right now. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like inside like almost melting because it wasn't just a few years ago where I drove in one of those exact same kind of boats with one three-and-a-half horse motor strapped to the back on one side and one five-horse motor strapped to the <laughs> other side. Okay, one was water-cooled and one was air-cooled, and we were just hoping <laughs> – that we would make it to the spot and back. And they all had six penny nails as a shear pin. <laughs> that, <laughs> right. That's how we used to roll. <laughs> and I'm thinking, this this was literally us, you know. But here, this kid had evidently borrowed his grandpa's truck, trailer, and boat. Probably all his decoys and everything, too. Hunting license. <laughs> yeah. And, and headed down to do a little hunt in his grandpa's spot. So now we head back to the ramp. And, you know, he's thanking me, hey, look, like, Obviously, that was best case scenario. I, I wasn't anticipating that at all. Thank you guys so much. And for us, it was almost like, wow, you know what? We came all the way down here, and we really didn't get on any ducks. Well, yeah. Well, why, why, after you left, Matt goes to Will and I, you know, maybe this is why we were supposed to come down here to like help find this guy that could be stranded or, you know. Even worse. Even huh? worse, yeah. like face up in the water face down in the water somewhere like we were thinking worst case scenario and uh, we're like you know maybe this is why we were meant to come down here and but yeah i mean thankfully, thankfully it wasn't it, wasn't, it that. wasn't that case at all but like the warden said he's like i would have had to go home a half hour hook up to my boat drive a half hour back out here meanwhile thinking that this you know this whole timer is having troubles and then go look for him by myself unaccompanied you know, there's there's not Probably a large force. Probably off the force. clock, even like yeah, oh, I don't yeah. think this I mean, guy was. He wouldn't have cared. Yeah. You know, no. he, he he was interested in the better welfare of a fellow hunter. Mm-hmm. You know, at that point, and I think uh, you know, kudos to him for 
for one, caring that much. Yeah, that's what we were talking about, for too. two, for, for willing to jump on just a random person's boat, you know, to go look. Because for him, I mean, he is a state warden. Like, mm-hmm. you know, he's taking a risk by going on another guy's boat. He don't know us from nowhere. I mean, no. he's talked to us twice at a boat ramp. But to, to go look for this guy. So that all ended up working out well. He talked to them guys when they got back to the ramp, and I guess they caught up, and, and it all ended up well, and, and it was really good. So yeah, that definitely made it the tail end of the trip really worth it. Yeah, yeah. certainly yeah. a different – not not what we were expecting coming back to the ramp, but no. fortunately everything worked out well, so it worked out. Yeah, and we were the only other boat out there, us and those guys. Mm. Yeah, so. yeah. No, there was nobody else there. So I think um, at that point, we were all pretty much pretty pretty hungry. Tracy had rolled out, obviously thanked us. We had a... Uh, well, we, 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 let him, we left and kind of let him do his thing because he, right. he had to go check everybody and they had their yeah. whole spiel. So we didn't want to hang around for that. So we end up... We had a lot of stuff to pack up. We had a lot of stuff to pack up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we didn't, he didn't need any backup at that point, so... <laughs> yeah. And then uh, we got everything packed up, got Dutch in the truck, and uh, we rolled out of there. Yeah. And where did we? We hit the Wendy's. We hit Wendy's. The That's Baconator. Right. Yeah, we hit the gas station. <laughs> I figured yeah. since we ate so healthy at the Chipotle <laughs> on the way there, we had to get us some greasy Wendy's on the way home. I got I to gotta give the kid a shout out. We were in Wendy's waiting for our food to get ready, and uh, they have like the, all those automated dispensers. And typically, you know, you buy the, the cup at the counter, and then you walk over to the dispenser, you fill it up with whatever you want. But at the dispensers, they also have the little cups for the ketchup. They're like little like half shot sizes. Right. <laughs> so this kid is over sitting by the dispenser. It was a girl. A guy or girl. On, we, we don't know. And... Uh, <laughs> Undisclosed. He's filling up the little ketchup cups with like Sprite or Coca Cola, <laughs> doing a shot and getting another one. I thought that <laughs> was, was pretty funny. She was sticking her hand <laughs> under the under the dispenser, blasting like <laughs> half a gallon of, over her hand, and then taking one little shot. Oh, that was some good entertainment. We were all pretty tired of that. The point, way to do that used to be just ask for a cup of water. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's considered stealing. We don't do that, but... Right, that I've seen it done. But now it's a whole new <laughs> level. <laughs> you don't even ask for the cup. <laughs> I'll give it to him. He was pretty... He uh, was thinking outside the box there. Yeah. yeah. And basically after Wendy's, Tyler and Will clocked out, and I was still wired from yeah. Ty's <laughs> coffee yep. that morning. Yeah. <laughs> that, that coffee well, we kicked didn't, in. We didn't, we didn't talk about everybody's nap time on the boat. Oh, yeah. I got in a solid nap. Caleb took a solid nap. <laughs> yeah. And he woke up and he's like, man, I can't feel my hands. <laughs> 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 oh, I fell asleep on a bag of duck decoys. All right? I had bills in my back and I was messed up, man. One of these guys calls, there's a duck, there's a duck. It was really just a cormorant, but I heard it in my sleep and I sat up and I got up. I grabbed my gun and it just like fell out of my hands. <laughs> I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, don't mind that. So we got, uh, we got Wendy's in us, and then uh, we probably had a, a two-and-a-half-hour drive from there. Tyler and I zonked out pretty quick, and then uh, Caleb and Matt brought us home. Dutch was in the back with us, too. We, he, he fell asleep on both of us. Oh, he was out since we like got off the boat at oh, that point. Oh, since he hopped in the truck. Yeah, yeah. On nice the way to the hunting trip, he's always super excited, oh, yeah. like <laughs> jumping around, standing on the console, and I know where he's going to go. And then on the way home, he's like, yep, we're going home. I'm sleeping. <laughs> but, yeah, we pulled in, and it was a safe trip. No trailer yeah. problems, no truck problems, no person problems. Yeah. Um, I mean, my feelings were a little hurt, but that's a story for another time. What were they? No, I'm just kidding. No, what, what was going on? Nothing. I was just kidding. No. Um, <laughs> yeah, we, we pulled in the driveway. I kind of cracked one eyelid and it's one of those things where you're like uh, i don't really want to be home yet because now i gotta get in my car and it's all cold and i gotta drive mm-hmm. home but yeah we made it happen it was uh all in all a good safe trip i think we had a lot of fun learned a lot yeah and uh i think we're looking forward to going back next year sure definitely think, not even next year this year still yeah uh actually well maybe it'll be next in in the new year but yeah it might be in this the hunting year. season yeah. The nice thing is that it's 
because it's title, it stays open. So like best case scenario, we get just locked up here in January where we can't do anything. Right. And we bounce down there quick and try to hunt. But even at that, it's the same deal because it's not like we can just oh, drive around the corner and do a little scouting mission. It was different back the past couple of years because I had my buddy who lived in Maryland. So he could shoot up there and be like, oh, yeah, we're good. Or no, we're not good. And that, that definitely made things a little yeah. bit easier. Yeah. But but it's not a horrible deal because it's... It's still a trip. Two and a half hour ride. It's it's, it's no weekend, different than if you go if you go deer hunting, you know, upstate or you go yeah. somewhere, you go to a new piece of ground or even a piece of ground that you've been to. You have no idea if there's deer there. No. <laughs> like when you guys went to Virginia, you're like taking their word for exactly. it. Exactly. Yeah. It's the same. Yeah. Yeah. We're yeah. gonna try it. Maybe we'll find some. You learn a lot. But you got to be willing to enjoy the adventure. That's what and I like not the it. kill. Otherwise, you're never gonna enjoy it. You'll never. You I, never I to me. Going there and killing one duck, regardless if we killed any ducks, was still right. an experience and an adventure that I appreciated. And killing a mess of ducks, yeah, that would be oh, definitely icing, on, icing the cake, on the cake. But yeah. yeah, it's not like I'm I'm not going there necessarily to kill a mess of ducks. I'm going there to hang out and and enjoy everyone's company and right and exactly. stuff like that. So yeah. new experience. Yeah. One thing I will say is I think that it's very important to highlight the fact that. There's no like, especially within our group, there's no like transparency problems. Like this is a hundred percent transparent. We literally went on a three hour trip, <laughs> yeah. shot one teal that right. I will admit to you was so shot up that I may have harvested that much meat off of it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> because it was so, you know, so close so fast. And I'm not afraid to say like you know, we're not just hot hitting the highlight reel yeah. here. No, definitely That's, not. This is this channel is all about the start to finish the whole process right. and like yeah i mean if you look at a lot of our content a lot of times we don't kill anything and it's you know there's several factors there due to limited time we have to hunt to scout different things like that but that's why we try and focus on the adventure of it right yeah, yeah. and i i think that that's a reassuring thing to people that are watching because i know that something that sometimes bothers me is I don't watch a lot of hunting content nonstop just because I mostly spend my time hunting. But when I do, anything you type in, you know, that you want to know about, all you're going to see is kill, 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 kill. Right. Mm -hmm. That's all it is. Where my whole entire life has been 10 adventures to one right. adventure with a heck of a, mm -hmm. a harvest, you know. So I think yeah, that's just yeah, something. That's what that, a lot of these guys will do those 10 hunts right. and then just show the one hunt, you know. Right, just show the one hunt. And that's what, like, we at least for our channel, like we want to show the adventure and those 10 hunts. And then when you see us finally harvest a deer or kill a mess of ducks or geese, or whatever, then you can see that we're, that we've put in the time. Right. And it, it eventually will pay off for you. Yeah. We right. got a good one just to maybe before we wrap this up, Matt and myself, we set up a little deal for my dad. He hasn't bow hunted since, I don't know, 86 <laughs> and uh <clears throat> his old hoyt is sitting in the case he wanted to shoot it like anything but the strings probably just look like floss so <laughs> <laughs> matt set him up with a uh a crossbow he had over the house and we set up a spot for him here on the farm i've been patterning this deer for literally two months he is like a guarantee morning and night maybe he'll take one day off and he'll be right back morning and night for a week you know and we were up and down whether we were going to harvest them or not this year or attempt to, right? But with a deer that patternable, it's all the more tempting, mm -hmm. especially due to the fact that we have no idea where this deer came from. We don't have no pictures of him last year. The only picture that we can draw relevance to him is in 2019, which if it is the same deer and not his father or his you know, mother's father or whatever, he hasn't grown very much. So we decide, okay, we're going to harvest them. It's a good one for my dad. My dad doesn't have a lot of time to hunt. Let's get him on it. And here, long story made short, we put this thing together, got the stands up there, you know, and it's Sunday afternoon after church, and we're going to get dad up there. Yeah, 14 tree stands in one tree. Yeah, we had we had a <laughs> – I was laughing. I'm like, oh, I hope that they kill this dude. We had a ladder stand, a lock on, and Matt was hanging in his saddle. Yeah, I was filming. And we were supposed to have my wife's camera. And she was in Virginia. I didn't know she took her camera with her. 
So last second, I'm scrambling. We ended up with a GoPro and Matt's camera, which is focus is like, bzz, 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 you know? <laughs> but we were going to make it work. It didn't matter. Yeah. And lo and behold, the deer decided he didn't want to show up that day. But the cool thing is, which I don't know, maybe this will make it out at some point in some kind of content is you want to describe the, what what we saw i mean so, t- 10 minutes before the light seen. goes out dad's got the you know excitement of his life because he thinks this deer's coming well first off caleb's looking at me and he were just bsing and all of a sudden i like look past him and here comes this body coming through this thicket and i go caleb there's a deer right here he's like what is it a thicket that, that me and you watched with our binoculars for like, like for three a, hours oh for hours yeah didn't see a leaf move he goes what is it i was like <laughs> I have no idea, dude. <laughs> I like put the binos up. I'm like, man, it looks like a screwed up spike, you know? That thing, well, first off, I dropped my phone out of the tree stand like <laughs> two hours yeah. prior, and it's literally like just constantly playing this reel of a uh, red stag bugling like nonstop. <laughs> like we're watching it through the binos and stuff. <laughs> and this deer could literally, you gotta get that this deer video, literally so. steps on it, and you can literally hear him step on my screen case. I'm like, you, he, he walks, steps on your walks he right underneath on us phone. on the phone. I mean, he was under underneath us. And I'm filming him the whole time, and he looks straight up at Caleb, and I'm like, what, what in the world is this thing? Dude, His he, I don't know if he got hit by a car or velvet damage or what, but his antlers start growing out over his eyebrow, and then they tuck down along the side of his head and come out, and it has like a little fork split <laughs> on the side of his head, and then the other yeah. side is like... It looked it like a button buck off. slash like a broken. Sp- I don't know. I don't even know what to. I don't even know how to explain it. But it wasn't like it grew out and then just turned down. It literally went under the skin yep. the entire way and then just like popped out. So it was almost like a tusk. It was the weirdest thing Jeez. I've ever seen. And I was and me I'm and like Caleb were just at looking at, at each other at, like. My dad looks at me. He turns around, you know, from his ladder stand. <laughs> he's like, "What the heck kind of deer are you growing around here?" <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, "Oh man, of all the deer he could see on this property, and this is the thing that walks by. I've never seen this deer in my life." And me, the deer is literally right underneath us. And me and Caleb just keep like looking at each other. We're like trying not to bust out yeah. laughing. Like, what is this creature? Like, I've never seen anything like this. <laughs> and he he got good footage of it. And then after the fact, my dad's like, or Matt goes, "Do you think you could have got a shot?" My dad's like. Oh, I had him three times in the crosshairs. I think I could have got him. He's like, do you think you'd be a good cold buck? I'm like, oh, boy. But, yeah, somebody's got to accompany this guy when we're on. Because yeah. <laughs> yeah. the little basket racks are going to be tough. Yeah. <laughs> Anything to the ears is in trouble with that, boy. Well, I think our uh, SD card is full here, so we're going to have to wrap this one up, unfortunately, boys. But uh, That's a good place to end. Yeah. Good story. So anyways, we appreciate you guys watching or listening and uh, be sure to look out for this video that's going to come out soon, probably before this podcast on YouTube. And uh, yeah, with that being said, well, I appreciate everybody watching. Uh, We'll catch you on the next one.